It's Thursday, January 21st, and you're watching The Great Lost Rewatch. Today we're talking about the life and death of Jeremy Bentham. Wearing black today, because, you know, someone died. They found a man who wasn't on the plane. The guy is, like, mysteriously hooded, like some kind of Jedi, and then he asks who he is, and we have the big reveal, and it is John Locke, seemingly resurrected from the dead. We then jump back to Locke fixing the donkey wheel. He wakes up in a desert in Tunisia like Ben did. When there are cameras around, so it doesn't take too long for a truck to come out and take Locke to a hospital. Because, of course, he still has a compound fracture, so you can, like, see his bone sticking out. Out. And the doctor set his leg and every time I watch it I do this. When he wakes up there is Charles Widmore. Widmore tells us that he used to be the leader of the others but then Benjamin Linus ousted him and he says I'm gonna do everything in my power to help you John because the war is coming and when it happens you need to be on that island or the wrong side will win. He also gives him an assistant Matthew Abaddon. Poor Locke because of his compound fracture he is confined to a wheelchair yet again reinstating that thought in Locke's mind that off island equals wheelchair on island equals frolicking and skipping around. The first stop is Santa Domingo where Said is there working for Habitat for Humanity. Locke then travels to New York to talk to Walt. I've been having dreams about you. You're in a suit on the island surrounded by people who want to hurt you. Locke didn't go to Walt to ask him to come back, he just wanted to make sure that he was okay, and to not tell him that his father is dead. Locke then goes to Santa Rosa to visit Hurley. Locke finally acknowledges to Abaddon that he recognizes him. I help people get to where they need to get to job. Next stop is Los Angeles to visit Kate. <laughs> Matthew Abaddon asked Locke if there's anyone you want me to find for you, and Locke said no, but then he said Helen, that she died of a brain aneurysm. And then... <laughs> Locke speeds away in the car, but because of that he gets into an accident and is sent to a hospital. In fact, it is Jack's hospital, who is there to greet him when he wakes up. And Locke says, your father says hello. He said his name was Christian. Bringing up Jack's daddy issues is just the quickest way to not get him to do what you want him to do. <laughs> Having completely and utterly epically failed at his job, John Locke sees no other way out but to kill himself. He's in a hotel room, he's bought an extension cord, he's about to hang himself, I mean literally the noose is around his neck, and then... John, what are you doing? Ben says that he was following Locke in all the Oceanic Six because he was trying to protect them from Charles Widmore because they are too important. You, specifically, John, you are too important to die. Locke just does not want to listen. I couldn't get any of them. I couldn't get a single one of them to come back with me. I can't lead anyone. Jack booked a ticket. You've convinced Jack so we can get the rest of them together. And slowly but surely, he convinces Locke to not kill himself. Ben gets Locke down in the chair and says, I don't know what we're going to do yet, but we'll think of something. Locke says, I know who we have to go see. We have to go see Eloise Hawking. Ben says, Eloise Hawking, are you sure? And Locke says, yeah. Do you know her? Yes, John. I know her. And he strangles him. I mean, Ben kills him. I just did not see that coming. Ben covers his tracks. He makes it look like a suicide. He takes Jin's ring. Precious. And before he leaves, he turns and says to John, I'll miss you, John. I really will. That scene is just so good. <laughs> I have a hard time putting it into words and good seems like too small a word to express how amazing I think it is. But I've said it before and I'll say it again. Anytime Masters, Emerson, and O'Quinn are in a scene together, it's just magic. But I think this one in particular is just so elevated by their mastery. I don't know how else to say it. I'm a huge, huge fan of this scene. We're back on the island now. Locke asks if everyone else is accounted for and he says yes, including the people who got hurt. And they go see these people and one of them happens to be Benjamin Linus. And Caesar says, you know that man? And Locke says, mm -hmm, that's the guy who killed me. And that's where we're going to leave it today with the man who killed John Locke. Liz, you're talking about Lafleur tomorrow, so I'll see you then. We're going to need to watch that again. Locke? Can we call him Locke? Because we all know he's not Locke. He's the fake Locke. He's Flock. But at this point, we're supposed to think he's Locke. So let's just keep calling him Locke. 
Sorry, that was a really roundabout way to get nowhere. 